Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a Lazy Day jumpsuit. I took this picture off of Dharma's website, and I also have a clickable link in the description box in case you're interested in buying one. For this project, I started by turning it inside out. I wanna check all of the seams and make sure that I don't have any holes. And while I'm doing that, I'm smoothing out all of the wrinkles. Dharma's really good about working with you on exchanges and returns, but you certainly don't wanna go through all of the dyeing process and washing it and taking all of that time to find out that there was a hole in it the whole time. Using a washable marker, mark out your pattern. Now this is not a necessary step, but I like to do it. It just helps me to have that visual aid. For this jumpsuit, it's going to be a geode type pattern, and I don't want to put a bullseye right on the center of the belly of it. So I'm going to start on the outer seam of the jumpsuit. So I give it a little pinch, I draw it all up right off the table and take it into my hand, and then I'm just going to wrap it with sinew. For those of you that are new to tie-dye and you're not quite sure what sinew is, I'm going to try to explain. So sinew is a wax covered string and wherever the wax covered string is, the dye can't penetrate the fabric. And when you're making a standard geode type pattern, those white lines are desirable. So if you don't have the sinew, you could use rubber bands, just make them nice and tight. You could also use kite string and wrap it really tight, but you will probably have the colors where they bleed together and that's fine, it's just going to create a different looking effect. As I'm working my way down the fabric, I'm making each ring of the geode a different size. So some of them are close together, some of them are further apart, some are small, some are big, and that's going to create a more random feel. We're not trying to make concentric circles. And if you notice, I'm ruffling the fabric up quite often, and that's because I want it to have a more natural geode type feel. Now if you wanted to, you could keep on going. You could wrap with the sinew all the way down to the other end. But for this project, I wanted to have a few different geodes. So I find my washable marker pattern, and I find the center of that, and I do the same thing. I give it a little pinch, I draw it up off the table and take it into my hands, and then I just start wrapping it.
I'm going to slow it down a little bit so you can see what's happening. So this geode that we've been tying up is now meeting up with the first geode that we created. And organically, a new geode has formed itself. So I'm just going to ruffle up the fabric and tie this one off. And if you notice with this one, I didn't even have to cut the string from the previous geode. I'm just working from the base of it all the way to the tip, and that's completely fine. Okay, so now we're moving on. So I'm looking for my washable marker and I can see my line, but it's much too close to the other geodes. So I'm just gonna improvise. So I'm just going to move it down a little bit and like the others, just give it a little pinch, pull it up off the table and start wrapping it up. I should mention that rayon is a delicate fabric, especially when wet. So when taking it out of the washing machine, you don't want to really pull on it hard because you're going to tear a hole in it. And when you're washing it, it's a good idea to use a garment bag. And then also when working with it, you know, you don't want to be too rough with the material, but you do still need to pull that sinew tight. So just pay attention to what you're doing. So far we've wrapped up four geodes and if you remember in the beginning I only drew on three half circles. So this is the fun part about making geodes. They sort of dictate to you what's going to happen. And so there's two very obvious pieces of fabric left that are going to become two more geodes.
in the center here where all the geodes meet, it reminds me of a crab. So like you have the crab body and then you have his legs coming off, right? So the body of the geode, I like to add sinew lines. I think it creates more interest. If you don't put the sinew lines in there, then it's just going to be like one blob of color. So just keep on wrapping. The more random, the better. We're down to the last bit of fabric. And right here in the center, you could tie that little bit off and make it into its own little geode. I decided just to incorporate it all into one big piece. I love, love, love my new sinew polar. It makes projects like this so much easier to do. And I have a link for it down below in the description box. And Nikolai is awesome. It's coming from Moscow, Russia, and mine came in about two weeks. And I think that's just great. You can buy them off of Amazon, but what's special about this one is it has a chuck that you can put into your drill and you can wind up the sinew in just a matter of minutes. I do have a tutorial on how to wind it, so check that out. But I highly recommend getting yourself one of these. And it's beautiful wood, and he's an awesome tie-dye friend of ours. You know, he's in the community. So instead of getting it from the big box guys of Amazon, you know, support our fellow tie-dyer. So his name is Nikolai, and again, the link is down below in the description box. Yay, we have it all tied up. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye, and this is my favorite part. So you wanna start by finding a container that's about the same size as your project. And I got this one up at the dollar store, and it works out perfectly. This is going to be a muck dye, so you want something that's going to hold in all that melted ice water. When adding the dye colors, I'm adding them systematically, but also randomly. What an oxymoron. But I have six colors. And so I'm starting with the golden yellow, and then the next color I'm going to add is marigold. But where it becomes random is, I'm not starting off each tip of the geode with the golden yellow. Some of them I'm using darker colors. So it's a system, but it's also very random.
want to give a quick shout out and a thank you to all of you that voted for this romper. I asked if we should do fall colors, purples and pinks, or beachy blues, and I would say fall was a landslide in the votes. I think over 500 of you voted, so here it is. And I'm glad that you guys chose fall colors because I think it turned out beautiful. Now grab a mask and give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. When adding your ice, you want to add enough so that your project is completely covered, but you don't need to add so much ice that you have several inches of muck water. That's just not necessary. And then you want to let it batch for 24 to 48 hours after the ice melts. It's been 48 hours since the ice is melted, and this is what it looks like. And I'd say there's about two and a half to three inches of muck water. The reason why I went with the 48 hour batch time versus the 24 hour batch time was because here in Oregon, our temperatures have cooled down quite a bit. And I wanted to make sure that this project had a chance at the most vibrancy as possible. You want to batch at 70 degrees or higher. Undoing these geodes can be almost as difficult as tying them up. If you do run into trouble, you could use a seam ripper. Um, be very, very careful that you do not tear a hole in your fabric. So you wanna start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. Now at around 48 hours, or longer, the soda ash and the procyon dyes should no longer be reacting, but I still go through the motions. And then from here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle. I do a second hot water cycle using Kirilon, which is a textile detergent. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Milsoft, which brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process and then I put it in the dryer and we come back and see the results. But I should also mention that when working with rayon, it's a good idea to use the laundry garment bags. That way it's not getting all caught up on your, what is that thing called, uh, the agitator inside the washing machine. Aren't these colors so pretty, you guys? Once I finally got it untied, I was super excited and I couldn't hardly wait to get it washed and dried. Well, here it is guys. Here's our lazy day jumpsuit after it's been washed and dried. And I love this color combination. I would have never picked this out by myself. You guys voted and said fall colors and so I did it and I'm really happy with it and I'm going to make more fall stuff because the colors are so pretty together. These photographs don't do it justice. And what I mean by that is seeing it hang on a hanger or laying out flat on the table just doesn't show how pretty it actually looks. It would look so much better seeing it on the body. So I've been mannequin shopping and I've settled on one that I'm going to be getting from Amazon. So I'm excited. It should be here in a couple of days. That way when I make these beautiful projects, um, you know, this is not my size, so I can't model it for you. And I think it would just look so much better being draped over a figure versus just flat on the table. And then here are some close up shots and you can just see how beautiful and rich these colors are. The oxblood red, it's a really nice color because it's red, but it also has a lot of orange undertones. And for the playlist of the Dharma swatches, I can't wait to get into some of these more deep colors. So 
I'm super happy with the way this turned out. I'm glad that I didn't make pink and purple or beachy blues. The next one, I'll do that, but for this one, I'm super duper happy. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and then click the bell and set it to all, that way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.